Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ru Junma from Nankai University, located in Tianjin of China. Thanks a lot for Professor Kang's invitation. It's my honor to have this talk. I'm very sorry that I cannot attend this conference physically due to the pandemic. Today, my topic is applications of flexible or stretchable electronics and solid state cooling based on functional polymers. The most important thing for electronic devices is to have good electrical performance at suitable working temperature. So I will present our work of the electronic performance and thermal management of electronic devices. First, connective flexible adhesives. As a development of flexible or stretchable electronics, Connectors, semiconductors, and dielectric layers should possess electrical and mechanical properties at the same time. However, commercial safer paste can be used on the rigid substrate only. When it is bent on PT substrate, the crack can be absorbed. In addition, the connectivity of this safer paste is just 10 to 3. Siemens per centimeter. Connective cipher nanoparticle ink can be used on the flexible substrate, but the connectivity is still low and the current temperature is high. Here, we fabricated connective flexible adhesives composed of cipher flakes, carbon nanotubes, and nitride a butadiene rubber to replace commercial cipher paste. Nanoscale cipher particles were attached to the side walls of multi world carbon nanotubes, which constructed effective electrical networks between the micro scale cipher flakes to significantly reduce the contact resistance between them and the multi world carbon nanotubes. The connectivity can be maintained and the bending radius of 5 mm. The resistance change was smaller than 3.5% when the uh, sample was bent to a radius of 5 mm. The highest connectivity of more than 37,000 Siemens per centimeter can be reached even after 3,000 times bending cycles. There was no any absorbed cracks. The connective flexible adhesive has very good adhesion. When the cipher uh, concentration was reduced to 0 0.0861, none of the materials were removed from the CFA pattern. Even after cross hatching of the sample, and the helical structure of CFA can be stretched and maintain connectivity after 3,000 times stretching cycles. There was only a slight increase in the normalized electrical resistance. When the helical ribbon was stretched to 600%, which was the maximum strain allowed in the current experimental setup. As the connective uh, interconnects, the current and brightness of LED were not changed. The current voltage characteristics for the flat band and released states were almost identical. Demonstrating the excellent performance of the CFA pattern. That is flexible electronics. Next is connective stretchable fibers. In our ordinary life, 
our clothes are knitted using rigid fibers. They can be stretched even the fiber cannot be stretched. For that reason, we fabricated highly connective stretchable fibers using wet spinning. The video shows fibers are spinning from needle. The diameter and length of fibers can be controlled. The maximum initial connectivity of fibers synthesized by wet spinning was more than 17,000 siemens per centimeter with a rupture tensile strain of 50% strain. The maximum strain could be increased to 490% by decreasing the connectivity to 236 siemens per centimeter. However, the connectivity of fiber was decreased when the fiber was stretched. The elasticity of fiber was bad. To solve this problem, we coated elastic PDMS around fiber, and we achieved excellent mechanical uh, elasticity and electrical reversibility by coating the fiber and the fabric using PDMS. The cyclability was also excellent. The electrical performance of P PDMS coated fiber was demonstrated using LED chips. To improve the intrinsic elasticity of fiber, we fabricated the fiber using silver flower and polyurethane. The diameter and length of fiber can also be controlled. An extraordinarily high connectivity of more than 40,000 siemens per centimeter was obtained by silver nanoflowers, which is two orders of magnitude greater than that of fibers synthesized using spherical silver nanoparticles. This was due to the enhanced surface area and vigorous coalescence of nano disc shaped petals during the curing process. After the pre-stretching cycle, the fiber exhibited excellent elastic behavior during the first stretching cycle up to 70% strain. There was no hysteresis in connectivity during the stretching and releasing process. The pre-stretched fiber demonstrated excellent mechanical elasticity up to 75% strain and the length of the fiber returned to the initial value after releasing the tensile stress. We can twist the fiber into a row and use it as an elastic interconnect wire. The excellent elastic property of the rows enable selective illumination of a design spot. The LED could be returned to the original position after the illumination. We can also knit the fibers into fabric. The pore was first deformed, and the fiber started to rupture at 210% strain. The connectivity of fabric was not changed at 100% strain due to the structure of fabric. We replaced long rigid wire using our fabric and it can transfer signal of force and position. Next is stretchable semiconductors. Here I just show our part of stretchable semiconductors. We synthesized titanium dioxide tubes by anodic oxidation. The film of tubes was very brittle. As you can see the video, the stretchability was less than 2%. When we embedded the tube film into connective film, 
it can be stretched up to 200% string. And semiconducting properties were maintained because net structure was formed. We didn't finish it yet. I will move to the solid state cooling part. Here is solid state cooling. As you know, with the development of electronic technology, the integration of electronic chips is getting higher and higher. And the heat dissipation of chips is becoming more and more prominent. According to statistics, 55% of the chips failure is caused by overheating, and the current cooling of the CPU is through aluminum heatsink, blowing with a fan. The fan does have a good cooling effect, and it can be very small, but when the air temperature is too high, the fan doesn't work. We need to use air condition, and the current traditional air condition is to cool the whole room. Large size pollution of the environmental low efficiency. So the alternative cooling techniques are needed. In recent years, solid state cooling is a good alternative. They show some good performance. For example, thermoelectric cooling. It's very simple. There's no moving parts, but it has low efficiency. The COP is less than 4. The elastocaloric refrigeration is environmentally friendly, but it needs two extra actuators and it's difficult to scale down. The magnetocaloric refrigeration has good cooling effect, but it, has, it is very heavy and it needs large space. So none of them provides solution for compact size cooling device with high cooling power density and efficiency. Electrocaloric cooling can meet the above requirement at the same time. First, they are dielectric materials, pollution free, almost no power consumption, high efficiency, compact size. When the, when the electric field is applied or removed, reversible temperature and entropy change is realized. How to move heat from heat source to heat sink? As you can see here, when the temperature of film is increased, the film is attached with heat sink to flow heat. And when the temperature of film is decreased, the film is contact with heat salt to absorb heat. Many researchers have tried to fabricate cooling devices using different methods, as you can see here. Here, we fabricated cooling device using PVDF topolymer and an electrostatic attrition to rapidly transport a flexible EC polymer step between a heat source and a heat sink. The reversible temperature can be absorbed by applying or removing voltage. As you can see here the video. The electrostatic force not only moves the EC material, but also promotes 
the formation of intimate thermal contact between the EC polymer step and the heat source and heat sink during each cycle. We controlled the voltage switching for elect, uh, electrostatic actuation by an electric relay to switch between the silver and wire anodes of the heat source and heat sink. Here is a video of film movement between heat sink and heat source. We measured heat flux on both heat sink and heat source. We also found insignificant draw heating from the EC effect, verifying that the measured effects are not transient. We found that the heat flux of the PVDF TRFE CFE cooling device after continuous operation for more than one hour was the same as the initial heat flux. We increased the average heat flux of the cooling device by operating at a higher frequency. Also, the electrostatic attrition of the EC polymer step can operate at higher frequency. The frequency of the PVDF TRFE CFE cooling device that gives maximum heat flux is 0.8 hertz, due in part to the time needed to transfer the heat from the EC material to the laminate sheets at the heat source and heat sink. Another way to maximize heat flux is by increasing the electric field of the EC polymer step at a frequency of 0.8 Hz. The maximum electric field was set at 66.7 MV per minute to avoid electrical instability of the PVDF TRFE CFE cooling device. The EC polymer step did not show any sign of electrical failure or other damage after 30,000 cycles of charging and discharging. Comparing other solid state devices, we achieved a heat flux of 30 milliwatt per square centimeter with an applied electric field across the EC film of 66.7 megavoltage per meter. And this corresponds to a specific cooling power of 2.8 watt per gram. We demonstrated the benefits of the inherent thinness and flexibility of our cooling device by fabricating a version that can conform to a non-flat surface, a smartphone battery, and high workloads in a smartphone. The battery heats up to 52.5 degrees C. We allow to cool in air the surface temperature of the battery measured with a surface mount thermal copper decreased by 3 degrees C in 50 seconds. After the flexible EC cooling device was attached to the battery, the surface temperature of the battery was observed to decrease by 8 degrees C in the first 5 seconds with EC cooling active. Professor Qi Mingzhang wrote the perspectives for our paper. The refrigerant is also the pump. Actually, the polymer film is refrigerant. In the future, I think, 
the cooling device can be wear a cooling uh, bandage that replaces ice bags for injury treatment. And it can be cooling of biologic tissues or organ. And it can be put on office desk or integrated into chairs for localized climate control. And the important thing, it can cooling the electric device. Here is our recent work. We selected DOP modified PVDF TRFE CFE as an active EC material to prepare EC polymer stacks. DOP with benzene ring and long chain structure acts as an interchain lubricant chain. In PVDF TRFE CFE to reduce the stirring hindrance during the movement of molecular chains and improve the crystallinity from the cross-section SEM image, a clear boundary between two EC polymer layers is observed, and the thickness of each layer is the same 35 micrometer. When they apply electric field, increases from 60 mega voltage per meter to 130 mega voltage per meter. The temperature change of all DOP modified PVDF TFE CFE increase. Then we fabricated a double unit solid state refrigeration device using electrostatic force to achieve the rapid motion of two modified EC polymer stacks to pump heat. The double unit EC cooling device can operate in different frequencies. The temperature difference of double unit refrigeration device is always larger than that of the single unit one and different applied electric field. COP increases first and then decreases with the increase of applied electric field. And the maximum COP is 8.3 and the, the electric field of 41.7 megavoltage it indicates that there is a great enhancement of electric energy consumption when the applied electric field is larger than 41.7 megavoltage per meter. Also, large electric field also increases the heat flux of the device. The temperature span of double unit refrigeration device operating at the, the frequency of 1 hertz is 4.1 K and the, the electric field of 60.6 megavoltage per meter while the temperature span of single unit device is only 2.8. Here we demonstrated the cooling performance of the double unit refrigeration device for CPU in practice. Overheating can slow down processing power of CPU, shorten a service life, and even create a fire hazard. The double unit refrigeration device can operate at any time combined with an automatic control circuit. When the temperature of cooling object reaches the setting value, the ECE device start up temperature is 55 degrees C, considering that higher temperature will reduce the efficiency of CPU or even filler. From the moment power on of the CPU 
the surface temperature of CPU without the original cooling system rapidly uh, raises from 29.7 degrees C to 82.6 degrees C in 80 seconds. In contrast, the final surface temperature of the CPU cooled by the double unit refrigeration device is stabilized at 60.2 degrees C. This is the summer. Thanks to the funding and Nankai University. Thank you very much.